Good day, everybody. This is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar. And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to focus on talking about uh, enzymes and uh, some of the ways that we can quantitatively describe how enzymes are working. This will be a, a pseudo-quantitative approach. We're actually not going to use actual numbers, but we will get a good, uh, we'll get a good conceptual feel for uh, how the numbers work and uh, what's going on. So we'll be kind of going for high yield concepts here. So just a recap, we have uh, chemical reactions that involve uh, the initial the initial molecules. Uh, that's my initial molecule and we would call that a substrate. A substrate. actually read that. A substrate. And that substrate is going to be involved in some sort of chemical reaction where we have an enzyme here and that is going to yield some sort of product. And the enzyme will catalyze this chemical reaction. That is, it will make the chemical reaction occur more efficiently. And the products are typically going to be some sort of metabolite. Some sort of metabolite of the parent drug. Um, so we'll say that maybe the drug is a substrate. Okay, so that's nothing new. Well, what we can do is we can measure the velocity the velocity of the of the reaction, whatever that reaction may be, of that that um, that drug in this case being turned into some sort of metabolite, we can measure the velocity of the reaction, and we can plot that um, as a function. Okay, so if we 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 take the velocity of the reaction of the substrate to product. Okay, whatever the velocity is, and we plot that as a function. Okay, that is a function. Okay, as a function of the concentration. Okay, the concentration. The concentration of substrate. And typically that will be in uh, the brackets here, the substrate concentration, because we're often talking about molar, molar concentration. Okay, so what we can do, uh, let's just build a, a quick framework for how we think this works. So imagine, if you will, that I have substrate molecules here. And then I have my enzymes here. All right, so let's say that we've got, okay, we've got this many enzymes, okay? So if I have one substrate molecule, the reaction's gonna be pretty uh, straightforward. I'm gonna have a substrate to product, okay? Um, but what happens as I begin adding more substrate? Well, it should become very obvious that the more substrate I have, all right, the, the higher the probability is that a substrate uh, molecule is going to interact with an enzyme to uh, produce a product. And the more substrate I add, the higher the probability is for substrate molecules to interact with enzymes and to become products or metabolites. However, that is going to occur until I saturate all of my enzymes, until I have more substrate all right, than, than enzymes, and the enzymes can handle. And in that situation, we call that saturation. We call that enzyme, enzyme saturation. All right. 
And um, this should uh, be somewhat familiar because when we talk about pharmacokinetics, particularly in elimination, we have something called first order elimination. And uh, I've actually talked about this on other videos. And basically what happens with first order elimination is it is an exponential um, decay in the elimination. So the, the, the uh, concentration um, over time, um, okay, um, you have this decay and the, the higher the concentration, the faster the decay. Uh, whereas if my concentration's down here, the slope of this, the, the slope at, at this particular point, um, I'm not actually going to do the, the, the you know, a function of the derivative, but you know you can imagine that the slope right here is like this. So this is my slope here at a low concentration, uh, whereas the slope here at a higher concentration of uh, of the drug, uh, my my slope is going to look like this. So this is a much steeper slope than this. Um, so the elimination is going to be much faster here, and that's called first order elimination. And then when all of the enzymes become saturated, okay. So when I have saturation occurring, then um, I don't have that relationship anymore. I have a linear relationship like this, okay, where the concentration time relationship is linear and we call that zero order elimination kinetics. And the conversion from first to zero order elimination occurs when all of my enzymes become saturated. Okay, so there is a, another way that we can look at this, and, and we're not necessarily going to look at the elimination kinetics anymore. We're actually going to look at the velocity of the reaction. So what I can do is I can plot something like this, okay? So I'm going to have the velocity of my reaction, okay? So my reaction velocity I'm going to have here, Rx in the reaction, and then I'm going to plot that as a function of substrate concentration here. Okay, so this is not time, so this is concentration. So I want to look at what happens to the velocity of the reaction, and the reaction is the drug becoming some sort of metabolite or another way of putting that is a substrate becoming a product. All right. So what's going to happen? Well, at low concentrations, I'm going to have a low reaction, a low velocity of reaction. And then as I add more and more, as, as a concentration of the drug increases, then I'm running into this situation here where I'm having more and more substrate building up. And so what's going to happen is I'm going to get a curve that may look something like this. And every substance is going to be different, but we'll just take a generic curve. So it may look something like this. All right. So what's happening here? Well, what's happening is as the concentration is increasing, okay, so this would be zero, all right, and then maybe this is, I don't know, one, two, whatever. Um, constant, whatever unit you want to use, uh, molar. Um, so here, the velocity here is slower, is lower than the velocity here at 2. All right? So the velocity is increasing as the concentration is increasing. And, and, and we would expect that, that this is, that, that makes perfect sense. Perfect sense. And, and this is, this just stuff's kind of cool because this, Part of it is actually pretty intuitive, all right? But then I get to a point where this flattens off, okay? This flattens off, and then this is a straight line. So, so what happens right here? Um, and what I'm going to do is this, something special happens here. So I'm going to draw a dotted line. So right here, I'm going to draw my dotted line. 
All right, right there, okay? And what happens right here at this, this particular concentration? Well, at this particular concentration, whatever that, that concentration may be, um, I no longer have an increase in the reaction velocity. And so what has actually happened here is I have saturation, okay? My enzymes have saturated. I have saturation. All right, I have enzyme saturation occurring. And this right here is called the V max. That is the maximum velocity for this particular reaction. And substrate concentrations beyond this concentration will not result in an increased velocity of a chemical reaction simply because all of the enzyme has been saturated. All the enzymes have been saturated, rather. Okay, So that's called the Vmax there. And then there's another important, there's another important value or, or, or component, a concept that we need to know. And that is, where is one-half Vmax? Okay, one-half Vmax. All right. So if I find where half of my Vmax is, all right, so um, and here we're just going to kind of eyeball it, and we're going to say, well, let's see, what's halfway between here? Right about here, okay? So this is half of my maximum velocity, this being the maximum, this being zero. Um, and we're just going to say that that's right here. So I'm going to draw another dotted line, and I'm going to see where that intercepts this curve right here. All right. All right. So this is my one half V max right here. And then I am going to draw a line down and I'm going to find out whatever the concentration of substrate is at one half V max. And whatever this concentration is right here, this is a very special concept and we call this the KM value, okay? Now, what I want to do is I want to go for uh, big picture concepts here, and I want to know what, what is the KM value representing? Well, the KM value is a way of representing um, what the substrate, what the substrate enzyme affinity what it is. What is the substrate enzyme affinity? Uh, how, how high is the affinity for the enzyme to the substrate? And as a general rule of thumb, and these are really important concepts to just kind of get down and they'll become um, very important here in just a little bit, not in this video. Um, but as a general rule of thumb, what we can say is that as the Km value increases, okay, so as my Km value increases, all right, the affinity, the affinity, the affinity will decrease. Okay, the substrate enzyme affinity will decrease. And as the Km value decreases, all right, the affinity the affinity will increase, okay? So there is an inverse, so we can say in conclusion there is an inverse, there is an inverse relationship between the Km value and the enzyme to substrate affinity. We can say that. All right. And this particular graph that we have done right here, this particular graph is what's called a Michaelis, okay, a Michaelis Minton plot. A Michaelis Minton plot. So let me write that out there. K 
Michaelis Minton and Michaelis Minton plot. All right. So instead of the, the plots that I had been working with would actually plot the um, concentration as a function of time, this is a plot that looks at the reaction velocity as a function of substrate concentration. Um, now, from this plot, we will be able, from this plot in the KM value, we will be able to, we will, we will, we will um, take this and we will put this in a slightly different form. Actually, it's a very different form, another, uh, another plot. And then um, what we will do is I will come back and talk about the uh, KM values and how we can use these values on this other plot um, to make sense of uh, some very important concepts when it comes to um, uh, how I can inhibit the, the action of an enzyme, particularly when it comes to competitive versus non-competitive inhibitors of the enzyme. And in this, in this sense, when I say inhibition, I am not talking about the induction um, or the inhibition of induction. I'm not talking about that concept. I'm, not, I'm talking about actually interacting with the enzyme itself and inhibiting the ability for that enzyme to function properly. Um, so I just want to build the foundation of the michaelis minton plot and getting the KM value off of that, which is the half V max and whatever the concentration is, the half V max, um, and what the KM value in a general sense represents. And then what we will do is we will, in the next video, we will talk about something called a line weaver burke plot, which is simply a, a different way of plotting the Michaelis Minton. It is a the Michaelis Minton plot in what we call a reciprocal. Um, it is a uh, line Weaver Burke plot is nothing more than a reciprocal of the Michaelis Minton plot. And if that doesn't necessarily mean anything intuitively, um, I'm actually going to take you guys through that here in the next video. So I just want to build upon the foundation and we'll eventually work our way up to talking about competitive and non-competitive enzyme inhibitors. Okay, guys, as always, thanks for hanging in there.